Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 21. Now we got big with the big Ten Commandments. But we're not done. Now these are the judgments. Judge not least you be judged. Which thou shalt set before them, the children of Israel. If thou buy a Hebrew servant, your own family, your own nation, Hebrew, they're Hebrews. You got a Hebrew servant. Six years shall he serve. Now we're going to see a Sabbath year. Work six. And in the seventh, he shall go out free for nothing. The seventh year, you let him go. You've done your service. Here's your walking papers. And you don't give him nothing. How's that? We're talking about servitude. We're talking about paid people. Well, don't he get something? Seven. If he, the servant, came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. So what you come in is what you leave with when you enter the servitude. You got no wife, you don't come out with a wife. If it's, oh, that's a bad, I bet you that's changing Bibles. Master. I bet you that's going to be changed in the new modern Bibles coming out in America. Because we got to get rid of all that slavery. We're getting rid of all these, these southern names. That doesn't erase history. Master. That's in the Bible. So, if you don't like that word and what we're talking about right now, you're going to erase that from your Bible. And you are going to pervert the Bible, the Word of God. And then you can't get up in a pulpit and proclaim the words of the Bible if you change the Bible. And the Lord tarries, you're going to see new Bibles come up out of black churches. And they're going to erase all this that they don't want. They're going to change the Bible. If his master have given him a wife in the servitude in six years. And she had borne him sons or daughters. The wife and her children shall be her master's. And he shall go out by himself. Is that not cruel? Hires a servant. He gives that servant a mate. A wife to a male. Or if he's got a female servant. Gives her a husband. When it's the seventh year. Oh I'm married to that. That's much. No, 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 they're not. They're mine. You got to realize it says. By a Hebrew servant. That's when a human person becomes property. You may not like it, but it's in the Bible. It's there. And some people have to sell themselves such a servitude because they get in big financial debt. One of the laws will say if a man is found stealing, He's got to make restitution. 
The only restitution that he probably could make since he had to steal was he's going to work it off. And if the servant, bad word, shall plainly say, I love my master. Oh, that's possible. Not all masters are wicked. My wife and my children. I will not go out free. You know what? I like working for him. I love my wife. I love my children. It's the seventh year. I'm not leaving. I'm staying. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. This would be at the, the city gates. Where you found Lot. Where you find, uh, I'm going to say Ruth. Where you find Boaz. Say, hey, I got this matter with, with uh, Ruth and Naomi and Illuminate. I got this deal. I got this purchase of property. He shall also bring him to the door. Now this whole thing, I, think I cannot answer why or what, but it's interesting you bring him to the door. Because watch. Or unto the door post. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl. Pierced ear mentioned in the Bible as, hey, I'm not giving up my servitude to that man. Whether I, I, I love the service that he's done for me, or I love my wife and children. You see the hole in my ear? Man, man, the man has a wife. He has a hole in his ear. It represents, I'm going to remain in servitude to that man, for that woman, and for those children. Is that interesting? Now, you know what another interesting part here I cannot explain is the door. When, Egypt, when Israel left Egypt, they put blood on the doors and they were set free. Now, here's a man saying, I am going to give myself to that master, put a hole in my ear. And he shall serve him forever. Once you put that hole in your ear, there's no quitting. How long forever? That's a very serious situation. And if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall not go out as the maidservants do. I'll run back to the first two. She's not to be set free in the seventh year. She's to remain a maidservant. And if she pleased not her master, who hath betrothed her, engaged her to himself. So now here's a marriage agreement. Then shall he let her be redeemed so to buy back. There's a perfect redeem. The one that sold her has the right to buy her back. To sell her, redeem to her. Yeah. They shall let, then shall he let her be redeemed. To sell her unto a strange nation. He shall have no power. You can only sell that woman back to the person that did it or another Hebrew. Don't you sell her like they did with Joseph on the Israelite. Don't you sell her to Egypt. Don't you sell her to any nation. That is not in your power. Keep her among the children of Israel. Seeing he has dealt deceitfully with her. So she has been mistreated. She has not had the right done to her. If he has betrothed her unto his son. Now here's a servant where she will become the wife 
of the family. And here he gives her to his son. He shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. So just like your daughter-in-law. She's no more servant. She is now your daughter-in-law. And if he take him another wife, there's that cause. And I mean, God never really approved of it. But if you did, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. You still take care of her as your wife. Don't blow her off. And if he do not these things, these three, yeah, these, if he do not these three unto her, the food, the raiment, and the marriage, then shall she go out free without money. Then she's released. You're not going to take care of her as a wife that you said you would? Then let her go. Now, That's kind of cruel of a marriage thing, but there's a divorce in the Bible. You guys like let her go, and like she's got to go, go with a life. She's got to go do something. The women couldn't work back then, you know, the trades. She would have to probably go find someone else or get into another servitude. But verse ten is is a point of alimony while they're married. Just because he married someone else doesn't mean, hey, you, you, I don't know how Solomon could have a thousand wives and take care of them all. Alright. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. Ooh. That's kind of interesting. So anyone that causes death to another man by punching him. Death. That would not bring such the prison population that there is today overcrowded. And if a man lie not in wait, but God delivered him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither ye shall flee. And those will be the city's refuge we'll get to later. Here's where the cause is there was no hate, there was no envy. Accidental. But if a man come presumptuously unto his neighbor, a Jew, or even a stranger, to slay him with guile, Thou shalt take him from my altar, that he may die, and we'll see that later on, with Joab. Joab had killed men, not in wartime, and he runs to that altar, puts his hands on the altar, and Solomon said, listen, pull him off that altar and slay him. For the blood that he had slain, not in wartime. And this is where you get the cause where... You know, you see like in Mexico and, and Roman Catholic areas, Catholic churches, there's a guy who is a criminal, he runs into the church, and the law can't touch him. I can't think what the word is now. He takes residence in the church for the law not to touch him. And the Bible says, if he's guilty... Kill him. And when the Roman Catholic Church has taken those outlaws and has protected them, they violated the Bible. Even Paul, when he has a runaway slave, guy gets saved, he gets right with God, he sends that man back to his owner with a letter of Philemon. And then he asks Philemon, Yeah, but most of the cases they're guilty. You just pay the Catholic Church off money and they'll really allow you all sin. Paul says Onassimus to Philemon with a letter, 
And the second, since Philemon owns Onassis, seeking Philemon's permission, hey, I really like to use this guy. But I'm in your hands because you own him. And he that smites his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. That would get around the school. Where's Johnny? Well, he he hit his father the other day and he'd been stoned to death, the Bible says. And he that stealeth a man, slavery, or kidnap, and selleth him ransom. Or if he be found in his hand. You find the man that he stole is with him. You find that he has tried to ransom, tried to sell that man he stole. Shall surely be put to death. Surely. That's the word. That's the key word. That's not what America is doing. Surely be put to death. Capital punishment. You get today, someone who kidnaps somebody, they put them in jail. Or they'll try a plea bargain. It's not in the Bible. He that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. God is the God of righteousness. God is holy. And we look at these things here like, how cruel. And what one week have we not heard about death in masses in America? If men strive together, argue, fight, and one smite another with a stone. Ooh, let's get it. You got a little overhand. Or with his fist. And he died not, but keepeth his bed. He's been put to bed. He's been hospitalized. If he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, he gets out of bed, he's walking, he's moving, and shall be, amen. then shall he that smote him be quick. You don't kill him. You don't put him to death. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time liability. He couldn't work. You owe him. The time that he could not work. And shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. You make sure that that gentleman that you put in hospitalized, that gentleman that you wounded that cannot work, you make sure that he is completely whole. You take care of him. And if he doesn't get old, you better still keep taking care of him. I mean, if you put physical restraint that he can't do anything. You put him in a, I don't know if they have wheelchairs, but you put him in a wheelchair, well, you, you owe a debt to that man. If a man smite his servant, so one day he's on, or his maid with a rod, Oh, it does happen. It happened. And he died under his hand. He shall he shall be surely punished, but not executed. That's what the Bible says. Argue with God. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished. For he is his money. That human has become merchandise. There it is. If men strive, argue, fight, and hurt a woman with child, she's pregnant. 
This is, this is a complicated verse, sort of. So that her fruit depart from her. Miscarriage. And yet no mischief follows to the mother. He shall be surely punished with beaten. According as the woman's husband will lay upon him, so the husband and father has the right to the sentencing, and he shall pay as the judges determine. I want that man whipped. And then the judges will set a price. And if any mischief follow, the mother dies. Then thou shalt give life for life. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for a hand, foot for a foot. Burning for burning, wound for wound, strike for strike. How awkwardly are these phrases right here in 23 and 20 just misquoted by the world, but they don't even know what the context is. I bet you people who are on death row would probably use eye for an eye. And if a man smite the eye of his servant, here's the servant again, or the eye of his maid, that it perish. Ooh, ooh, look at the word perish here. Unable to see, unable to be used. Maybe taken out. Remember what Jesus said, that foot uh, offended, cut it off, better than, you know, that foot perish. He shall let him go for free for his eye's sake. I have wounded you, you're blinded, you have no eye, you have no eyesight. You're free. You're, you're gone. You're no longer under my authority. If he smite out his manservants too, or his maidservants too, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. Now 28 on, if an ox gore a man or a woman, that they die, bumps ransom, the ox shall be surely stoned, and his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit, okay, that animal has killed somebody. It is stoned, it is not eaten, end of the sentence, end of the judicial matter. It's closed. But if the ox were what? It is to have it. To keep doing. To push with its horns in time past. And it has been testified to his owner. And he has not kept him in. But that he has killed a man or a woman. The ox shall be stolen. And his owner also shall be put to death. Let me bring that up to date. You got a Rottweiler. It has bitten people in the past. It has been testified to the owner it has been in the past. This time it kills. Both the rot router and the, and the human that owns that dog. Capital Bush. If that dog kills somebody has not been testified to the owner, it's the first time that dog is to be put to death. Or cat. Or whatever you have as a pet. If there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. Whether he has gored a son or gored a daughter, your old family, 
According to this judgment shall it be done unto him. So the ransom is a fine. If the ox shall push a man's servant or a maid servant, he shall give unto the, their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. Now, you gotta really look at this one here, because this one looks weird. It looks like that, okay, here's a master, he's got a, a man servant. I'll say. Or maid, maid season. It looks like the maid of that master. Wow, your your bull gorged me. Well, you owe me thirty pieces of silver. But that's not the case. It's talking about someone else's servants. And what but the, but the thing is, we've been talking about servants. And you say, well, you know, my ox gorged your servant. That that's nobody of importance. There's nothing between you and me. It's only a servant. And God says, no, 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 no. And you are to pay 30 shekels of silver to the master of that servant that you're uh, that, That's what that verse is saying. That took me many, I don't know how long, how long I spent on that verse. Check in. Check, read, check in. Read and read. So it would be, somebody would say, okay, like I said, it was just a servant that was injured. Who cares? It was just one of your employees. Who cares? God cares. And if a man shall open a pit, make a hole, or if a man shall dig a pit and not cover it, and an ox or an ass fall therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good. The ass falls in there, it dies, you owe your ass to it. If a cow is walking by, falls in, and, and breaks its leg, you got to make that right. I don't know if you can heal a cow with a broken leg. If it's a horse, I heard you got to put the horse to down. You owe the guy a horse. Whatever is done by your hole that you dug or that you uncovered, that you did not cover, anything happens because of that action that you did, you're liable. Now, we're looking at liability. In chapter 21. You make someone sick. You hurt someone. So they can't do your job. Their job. That's a liability on you. The owner of the pit shall make it good. And give money unto the owner. Of them. Whatever animal. And the dead beast shall be his. <laughs> Imagine walking over. Here's a lamb. Okay here's a lamb for the lamb that got killed. Because of my hole. All right. Well, here's the de dead lamb. And according to the dietary law, too, you may not be able to do nothing with that lamb, but maybe just use the skins. I don't think you can eat them. And if one man's ox hurt another's ox against ox, boy, God leaves nothing out, doesn't he? That he die, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money of it, and the dead ox also shall they divide. Or if it be known that the ox has pushed in time past the ox that did harm to the other ox, he's been a problem. And his owner has not kept them in. He's not kept them in the pen. He's not kept them in the fence. He shall surely pay ox for ox. And the dead ox shall be his own. So there's liability. Right after the Ten Commandments. Liability. And capital punishment.